Hi, welcome to our channel. If you're new here, my name is Akinyi and this is my husband Benjamin. This is a story about how my life has changed since moving to America. Benjamin and I met on a dating app and we spent about a year talking before he decided to come to Kenya to visit me. By that time, we felt like we knew each other so well that when he asked me to marry him, I just said yes. Oh, and I forgot to mention, he came with a whole film crew from the 90 Day Fiancé show. I had to take a lot of tests, do my visa interview and the hardest part was when I had to say goodbye to my family and I got on a plane and I left everything that I knew in Kenya and came to America. I got here January 22nd, 2021 and that is where my story changed. The first thing I noticed was the difference in altitude. That isn't something that I hear people mention a lot. But America seems higher in altitude than in Kenya. I felt closer to the sun, so to speak. But other than the altitude and the extreme different weathers, my life has changed a lot. More than I ever imagined it would. So here are the differences. When I was in Kenya, I had my own room with my own staff and my own space. It was just for me and my dogs. They were my two special boys. And at that time, the only serious relationship that I had. That is supposed to be a joke. I would always cook for them because it was cheaper to cook for the dogs in Kenya than to buy their food. And I always made sure that I had the healthy foods for them. Here in America, it's different. I live with Benjamin, my husband, and our two little special boys, Shiloh and Winter. And the cherry on top is Grayson. We have him every weekend. I seem to have my life surrounded with boys here in America than in Kenya. The first big and the biggest change that has happened since I moved to America is my mornings. My mornings are very different. When I was in Kenya, I would wake up and I would have to go to take care of the chicken. My mom had plenty of chicken, around 200 to 500 chickens. So I was always in charge of waking up, taking care of them, making sure that they're out of their cages, feeding them, giving them water, making sure that I refill water where the water needs to be refilled and so that was my morning it was always busy and I would and I always had this white coat to go into the chicken room <laughs> and open their doors and just do all these things for the chicken so that was what I was super in charge of and so in America the morning is very different I wake up it's just calm and I don't have to worry about chickens I really miss the chaos that the chicken had don't get me wrong sometimes I miss like having that chaotic morning where i have to do the chicken fast and then after the chicken i would go upstairs and water my mom's plants because she was planting some herbs and also some kills my morning in america is different i wake up i do laundry if there's clothes to do i clean the house i don't have to clean the house every single day because it's not that dirty i make breakfast i have the breakfast i take the dogs to poop and pee and then i go to the gym i work out here in america i work out in the morning in kenya i used to work out in the evening so after a long day i would go back home i would put on a video or i would put on a workout video and then work out through that and so that was one of the biggest differences i would work out in the evening and then here i work out in the morning because it's just easier then when i come back i start working on my computer and that's usually how most of my mornings start and then for the most part of the day i just film a lot for content and that is my mornings for work i was a makeup artist a photographer and a web and software developer my major was in information technology so i was always busy doing something during the week and also during the weekend with makeup and photography here in america it's different i still am waiting for some of my important paperwork so for now I get to work as an influencer on social media, on all my social media platforms. Influencing takes a lot of time. It's not an easy job contrary to what people think. But that is a story for another day. But I love it because I get to communicate with people from all walks of life whose stories sometimes are like mine. Laundry was always hard in Kenya because I had to bend over for hours to clean clothes and then hang them and then wait for hours to make sure that they're dry. It took a whole full day to do a full week's laundry, but it's different since I got in America. I now have a washer and a dryer. All I need to do is just put the clothes in, the soap in, and then they wash. And then after that, I put them in the dryer. It's easier because my back is spared. I do miss the hard work sometimes, but I like this part where I feel like I'm a little bit comfortable. The bathroom is a little bit different than the one I used in Kenya. 
Now let it be known that I'm talking about my life and my experience. I have had some Kenyans come up to me saying that I should specify that I am the one who lived like that, that it's not all Kenyans. So I'm being specific that this was my life and my experience. I didn't grow up in a mansion, neither did I have a silver spoon, but I had a very happy childhood with great parents and a great family. And I am always grateful for how hard they worked to provide for me. Our bathroom was small and we shared it. We had two bathrooms that were not in the house but outside and I would have to carry my soap and my washcloth to the bathroom. It was so normal for me. And that is how we all showered and got clean. I would have to carry the trough of water or the bucket depending on how you say it to the bathroom or I would sometimes have to warm my water from the fire I had to make from the charcoal and that was also normal and it was a simple lifestyle. And after the bathroom, I would hang all my wet makeshift towel, which in Kenya we call a lesso, my underwear in the hanging lines. Our toilet was also a pit latrine and I was used to squatting to go number one or number two. Here, it's different. Everything is in the bathroom. The shower, the water, the soap, all those things, the toilet, those things that make it easier for you to go to the bathroom. But good news, before I left for America, I got to help my mom with a little bit of construction and I put in the shower head for her so that she doesn't have to carry buckets to the bathroom and so that she doesn't have to warm water. So now I can safely say we both have the same bathroom experience. In Kenya, I would use a lot of public transport. I would have to walk to the stage to catch the bus to take me to town and then from there I would walk to another bus station to take me to another part of Kenya that I wanted to go to or somewhere else. I would say I walked a lot in Kenya than I do here in America. Now I can see why there's gyms everywhere. The American culture is set so that if you don't have your own car, you're stranded because you can't go anywhere you need to go. And using an Uber every time can be costly, so it's much cheaper to own your own car. Now let it also be known that I'm talking about my experience in America here in Arizona. I know that there's places in America like New York and other places that people tend to walk a lot more. In Arizona, I don't see that very often. I have had people say it's because of the heat and I can understand it. Sometimes it gets very, very hot in Arizona. I hate the heat. If I had an option, we would move to a state that has four seasons or just three seasons, but they're not as extreme as the summer in Arizona. But I'm saying that the car or your transportation means is very important, especially in Arizona. Also, stores are far apart from where homes are, so you would need a car to drive you to the stores. So for now, I don't think I need my own car, but if I needed to go somewhere, Benjamin always drives me. When you get married, your responsibilities shift from your family that you had before you were married to the family you create in your marriage. That doesn't mean that I have forgotten my family back home. It just means that my priorities are slightly different. If you're married, maybe you understand this. When I was in Kenya, it was always about me and my family back home. But now it's about me and my family that I have here that comes first, then my family back home comes after that. This seems to sound like a complicated topic, but it's simple in the sense that I am now married. I'm just thinking like a married woman in her home. The way we buy food in America is so different from the way I used to get food in Kenya. First off, we had a huge market where I used to live and the market was open seven days a week. Everything was fresh from the market. The fruit was not super expensive as it is in America or frozen. Everything in Kenya was fresh or is fresh. I'm just talking in past tense because I'm not there anymore. Nothing in Kenya was GMO and this is opposite of America. The food is fatty and the vegetables are mostly GMO unless the tag says it's organic. There is no market so everything is found at the supermarket. There are special farmers market days where you can get all the fresh vegetables from the farm. Food is such a big prolonged topic in America that I don't think I have enough time. So I think I will leave it here. All I can say is that the food is very different, tastes different from what it's like in Kenya. When I was in Kenya, I used to thrift shop a lot. I would go to a thrift market called Gikomba Market to get clothes. 
and because i did that a lot i never knew my actual body size with an exact number which i am learning that in america that is a very important because there are different ways of shopping here i love how american shopping is set up you can shop online and it's delivered to your doorstep because of the precise addresses that each house or apartment has where i lived back in kenya there is no specific address. You just knew what the place is called. Find a landmark that everybody knew, like a church or a mosque or just something. And then after that, tell the person coming to you to find a white gate because that's what our gate was or whatever color your gate is. And that is all the direction you needed. In America, it's different. There's specific addresses, specific roads, specific, everything is just very specific. So that is a big difference. Speaking Speaking of gates, most American houses don't have gates. Everyone has a front door and a backyard, but it doesn't have a gate. The closest we come to a gate is a fence around the house that leads to the front door, but never a gate. Unless you're speaking about a gated community where there's a big gate at the front that leads to many other houses, but that's as close as to a gate that you can get here. Whereas in Kenya, most homes have a gate. The roads in America are tarmac and most of what I grew up on was dirt roads. So I was used to washing my shoes a lot because of the dirt. When it gets to the shoes, you have to wash the shoes. If you have shoes that need shoe polish, I would have to polish the shoes every single day when I was going to school and so I was used to that. Here I don't have to do that very often because I am either going everywhere in a car or I am walking on a tarmac road. Now that doesn't mean that there is no dirt. It just means that there's not as much dirt as I was used to in Kenya. The other big change is that in Kenya I was a dog mom. I was only a dog mom. But when I came to America, I quickly transitioned into a stepmom. The comparison is that I was used to mothering animals and I wasn't used to mothering a child. At first, I was really scared of that because I didn't know what it entails to be a stepmom, what it means, like I just didn't know. Every time I speak about it, I always say for me, it was a new territory for me to just cross. But in all things, I always ask God for guidance and Grayson and I have a great relationship. It's better than what I had imagined it would be. I think when I was a girl and thinking about marriage, I was never thinking of marrying a man who has a child. I never thought of myself as a stepmom. You know, when you're thinking about marriage, you're not thinking, oh, someday I'm going to be a, a, a stepmom. You know, when you're thinking about marriage, it's you're single, the man is single, and then you get to create a family together. That was my notion of a marriage when I was a girl. I didn't have an ambiguous thought about it. So now that I am older and I have a much better understanding of it, I married a good man and I'm in a good relationship. And that relationship came along with a boy and we have a great relationship together. God has blessed me and that's all I can say. The biggest change I have noticed so far is my weight. My lifestyle has changed from where I used to walk a lot to here where I go everywhere in a car. And in Kenya, I would walk a lot and still walk out every single day. My body is adjusting and I think back then it was so easy for me to be leaner because I was walking out every day and I was walking every day. Here, it's different. My body is adjusting to the new environment and I would be lying if I was saying that I wasn't building myself up for how different I look right now. I walk out every day, I walk the dogs, but I don't know what is happening to my metabolism. So I say to myself, let's just give it a year and see how my body responds to it. So hopefully this year everything changes. The last thing is that in Kenya there are a lot of motorbikes and if you are going on short distance travels, motorbike is the way to go. Here there's people who have made the motorbike a lot lifestyle and you know a motorbike in america is mostly considered a dangerous means of transport so it's not the same in kenya as it is here but we use motorbikes a lot and i loved to use them all the time i actually miss using them i don't know if there's other differences that i haven't mentioned but these are some of the major differences you know the houses are different with how they look the american houses they look very different they're made from wood and most kenyan houses are made from bricks the other difference is probably something like 
America has a dead culture, but this is a story for the wide story in my opinion that America has a dead culture where there's credit cards everywhere. Whereas in Kenya everything is cash only. And so I'm trying to see how we can overlook that where we don't need to have so much debt, but also try and work according to how things work here. It's very complicated, so I'm not going to get so much into it. But that is most of the differences that I have seen here in America. Those are some of the differences of how my life has changed i am happy with the life that i have here because if benjamin wasn't by my side then i think i would be miserable god really did bless me with a man who holds him in high regard i am grateful for that and i'm grateful that we get to pray together and we are best friends fast before everything else and he's just the greatest gift from god as a husband thank you so much for watching this video and being a part of our journey together if there's something you feel that i haven't mentioned please feel free to comment in the comment section thank you guys so much and we love you and if you're not yet subscribed please click on the subscribe button click on the bell notification button so that you're notified every time we upload a new video and then click on the like button because that does a lot for our videos and also don't forget that god is good all the time see you on the next video bye